What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P. And in today's video, we're gonna be testing out my one week use of the brand new Microsoft Surface Laptop 2. And as you can see, we have it in the new matte black finish as well, which I think looks really nice. And instead of rushing out a review for you guys after only having this in for like two, three days at most, like most tech YouTubers will out there, I really wanted to put this to the test. So I used it for a week straight in real world scenarios. So I figured I'll take you guys with me on this journey, tell you how it performs, give you my general thoughts and feedback on the brand new Microsoft Surface Laptop top two after one week. All right, so far at day one, I just have a lot of the programs and software that I'm gonna need installed, but I've been doing a lot of casual, you know, social media browsing and keeping up with the channel. And it's all very fast and smooth, but you're gonna expect that from the first time booting up a laptop, obviously. Uh, but in terms of my first impressions, one thing in particular stuck out to me right away, and that is the screen's aspect ratio. So it's three by two coming in at 2256 by 1504 pixels. And with the screen size being 13 and a half inches, it is just very crisp and clear overall. Definitely a nice looking display. But since it is three by two, having that extra vertical screen real estate is gonna be great for like snapping two windows side by side. So whether you're gonna get some work done or you just wanna have two web pages up, the aspect ratio works out nicely. So a subtle difference at first, but I do like the use with this form factor here. And one thing that I always fail to take advantage of because I'm just not used to it is the fact that we have a built-in touch screen. It has 10 point multi-touch and the screen itself is actually Gorilla Glass 3. So it's gonna be very tough. And that's good because if you're using the like Surface Pen or a stylus with this, that's gonna be much less likely to scratch or leave scuffs. There is still a decent amount of wobble, not too much of a big deal though. Um, I've definitely seen worse. Into the rest of the build quality, it is 220 millimeters long by 308 millimeters wide, and is just over a half inch thick, so it's definitely on the slimmer side. As for ports, on the left you have your USB 3.0 port, a mini display port, and your headphone jack, with the charging port being on the right side of the laptop, and that is literally it. But one of the new additions this year is the matte black finish, and I think it looks great. I am loving it. And the actual surface of the laptop when you open it up where the keyboard is, is this very soft fabric-like cloth texture. They've used this in previous products, and it's also been used in like car upholsteries and stuff like that. It feels nice in your wrists and palms when you're typing, so that's good. And while we're here real quick, the keyboard is also pretty nice to type on. There are these tactile keys with a subtle bump to them, and we do have built-in backlighting on the keys. But for the trackpad, it is a little bit smaller than I'd like or than what I'm used to. The one on the MacBook Pro that I've been using is definitely larger. And so far, I really just can't get used to that. So what I've been using is my Logitech MX Master 2S mouse. Uh, nice and wireless, a great mouse for productivity. And the one thing that I noticed is the color scheme here is like directly on point and matching the Surface Laptop 2. So I'm probably gonna be using this mouse going forward. It's just a match made in heaven. So one of my main concerns on the first day is like I said before, the long-term quality of how this fabric is just gonna hold up over time. While it looks great and it feels nice, I just don't know if it's gonna remain that way. I'm someone who likes to bring this with me if I'm going to the cafe to like get some quick work done or in the mornings so when I'm checking emails, drinking some coffee. Sometimes if I get a little bit of my laptop, I can just wipe it off because it's aluminum, you know? With this, if you do spill anything on it, it's gonna be an eyesore and it's gonna leave a stain permanently. All right, so it's around three or four days later now, I've been using this throughout the weekend, and I got a decent amount of work done in terms of like editing and stuff. And one of the bigger changes this year that improved over last year's model was now the base model has eight gigs of RAM instead of four. So that's a good surprise, and that's what I have in my model. Uh, this is all like the base specs and stuff like that. And if you're doing a base configuration, it starts at $999 or $899 for students. So under $1,000 I think is really good. Again, for the base model, you can obviously upgrade it and spec it from there and it will increase in price. But it's good to see now that eight gigs is the minimum for RAM. And like I alluded to before in terms of like video editing, um, I use Adobe Premiere. So when I got that booted up, I was able to edit 4K files relatively smoothly. There was some stuttering and playback and stuff like that, but that's, that's kind of to be expected here with a base model like this. But once I started pulling up like Photoshop and Audition to either like, you know, mix audio files and stuff, then it definitely slowed down having, you know, two or three more of those power hungry programs open. But of course, if you're gonna be adding a lot to your timeline when you're editing or even something with like, you know, Adobe After Effects, then yes, you're probably gonna notice a bit of a slowdown in, uh, in terms of speed overall. And now in terms of some other things I wanted to talk about, um, over the past few days, I've listened to a lot of music on this and the speakers are embedded like into the actual laptop underneath the keyboard. So you're not gonna have, you know, really speakers on the side or anything, it's in the keyboard. It did get pretty loud, not gonna blow you away. And if you're typing and stuff, it doesn't like muddy the sound or anything, which I thought was good. And then we could talk battery life. I think they said uh, it averages like 14 or 15 hours. I noticed I got, I've gotten around 10 hours a day, I would say, or it's a 10 hour charge before I'd have to recharge it. 
and that's because I am doing some video editing and you know watching videos and stuff like that. Um, so 10 hours, again, not too bad, but what I noticed I thought was pretty cool and I didn't even notice it until I did plug it in the charge was on the actual wall adapter, there's a built-in USB port so you can, you know, charge other accessories and stuff like that just with the wall adapter. And then here on the side, like I said before, the charger's on the right side of the laptop. It's a very nice magnetic, like auto snap into place adapter. Definitely aesthetically pleasing as well. It fits in, got a little light there to let you know that it is charging. So it's been around four days, like I said, so far so good. I've been trying to use the trackpad a little bit more and it's gonna be fine for most people and for like web browsing. Uh, but for me, I'm just definitely using the, the MX Master 2S. This is just more my style here. It's a little bit too small for me. All right, so it's the seventh day now and to kind of wrap up the past few days as well as the overall whole experience, one of the things I tried recently was gaming on this. Now, it is not marketed by any means as a gaming laptop and that definitely shows because you're not gonna wanna use this for gaming. I played two games, Counter-Strike and Overwatch and CSGO at like medium and low settings was probably close to like 20 frames, very stuttery. And in those kind of games, even like Overwatch where it's, you know, not graphically intensive, but very fast paced, there was enough stutter to make me be like, okay, this is not gonna work out at all. And it really didn't. Now I didn't do like benchmarks or anything because again, this is not a review of a gaming laptop and it's not marketed as a gaming laptop. So let's just rule out gaming right away. Then while I was trying out gaming or editing, uh, yes, the fans would you know, rev up a bit, but it was never to the point where it was too loud and like annoying or anything. And uh, for heat, yeah, it got a little bit warm, but it was also never to the point where that was also gonna be a problem or I never thought it was gonna get you know like too hot while I was using it on my lap or just you know typing away on it. It, it was never to the point where I was concerned, which is definitely a good sign. Now to kind of recap everything here, uh, we'll throw it down to the pros and cons. For the performance for the price, even at the base model for student pricing, the price to performance ratio is outstanding. This, you, mean, you even look at like other laptops out there, MacBook Pro, LG Gram, Razer laptops, those get really, really expensive. And this, for the base model, it's just really tough to complain for the overall, you know, the size, how thin it is. Really great performance for students, and that's, you know, what it's gonna be marketed towards. Uh, some pros, like a 10 hour battery life for me, I thought was great. Got some, you know, minor editing done, like I was saying, but it was nothing too intensive, so. It was good that it could even handle that. Uh, speakers were nice. The screen is just beautiful. I'm really happy with the performance overall. That's that's the one takeaway from this is you're getting great performance for the price. Um, cons, kind of like I was talking about before, with that fabric texture, it looks great. It feels nice, but I am concerned for the longevity. I know in like six months to a year from now, um, even though it is like a darker texture, I know there's gonna be stains and grind just building up over time that's natural and even after just the first week there is kind of like a little bit of a mark in the bottom right hand corner just from where my wrists say so be cautious be careful keep liquids away from this thing and i would like to have seen an extra usb port or something on the side even like a usb c uh, just having the one port kind of disappointing now to wrap it all up like i said before great price to performance uh, it's tough to admit but after a week with this i can determine that is not for me I think something like the Surface Book 3, whenever that comes out, that's gonna be more my style just because of the person I am. I'm not a student, I'm not in school anymore, and this is what this is really marketed for, you know? At times I do need a power heavy laptop where I can edit 4K videos and mix audio files all at the same time. But again, I have the base model, you can obviously upgrade it and spec it up from there, but I'm just gonna need something that is more power heavy like the upcoming Surface Book 3. Uh, but for students, who this is really designed for, Getting work done for class, lots of, you know, just online stuff, casual, you know, not too power intensive programs, you'll be able to be just fine with this. And just for that $899 student pricing, absolutely great. It's been a very positive experience. And over the week that I've had it, there's really been just very, very few complaints that I addressed. So this is a great laptop for students. There's no doubt about that. Just not for me and my situations. And guys, I'll wrap it up with my one week use of the new Surface Laptop 2. Hope you all enjoyed. If you want to check it out, I'll put a link for it in the description down below. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up to show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at RandomFrankP. And lastly, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Well, I'm RandomFrankP. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good day.